Are you a new or seasoned real estate investor looking to acquire more properties, but unfortunately running into a debt to income ratio issue? Well, no worries. You've come to the right place. My name is Katie Katz and I help homeowners and investors just like you qualify for non-traditional financing. Because the last video I made on the DSCR loan and what you need to know got so much traction, I want to make sure all of my viewers out there are aware of the latest guidelines and products that is available in our current market. My goal is to also help you feel more comfortable about this loan type so that way if you are looking to build that property portfolio, you know there are alternative options outside of your traditional conventional FHA loan products. So let's get right into it. Because I took a lot of notes, I'm going to be going back and forth. Let's go over the DSCR loan, what it's short for and why it's so popular. It stands for debt service coverage ratio. Ultimately, if your investment property that you are buying as a business is cash flowing, we don't look at any income or employment history. So those are the reasons why this is the most popular product among real estate investors. We don't collect any pay stubs, tax returns, W-2s. We don't care if you are even working. As long as the property is performing, we can qualify you for this product, okay? And the amount of time that you need to close on this loan, I've seen as quickly as two weeks. So there's a lot of pros more than cons. And as far as the parameters, let's kind of dive right into it to share with you what the minimum loan size is. That's 75,000. The max loan to value, if you're purchasing, we can go up to 80%. If you're doing a rate and term refinance, we can go up to 75%. And if you're doing a cash out refinance, up to 70%. Foreign nationals are eligible for this product as well, and we can go up to 70%. Now, gift funds, that is allowed 100% as long as it's coming from a family member. The type of properties that can be financed using a DSCR is a single family, all the way up to 10 units. I do have investors inquire about units that are larger than 10, whether it's a multifamily or apartment complex. I do have investors that can help you up to 30 units, okay? So if you do have a scenario, be sure to reach out to me and we can go over that. Credit, the minimum scores required to purchase using DSER is 620. If you're doing a cash out refinance, we need you at 640. Now, no foreclosures are allowed within the last four years and no less than two years activity if you filed a bankruptcy. Now, let's spend a little bit time about the DSER ratio. That is predominantly what we are looking at for this type of product. How we calculate your debt service ratio is we would take your rent and divide it by the allowed ratio. Now, some videos or some banks you may have heard, they allow 1% or require 1.25. I have investors that can go as low as 0.75. So what does that mean? Let's use your mortgage payment and your rent. Um, those two figures is what we would be looking at. So let's say you're collecting rent in your area for the subject property, call it 3,000. And because I have investors that allow down as low as a 0.75 ratio, what you would do is take 3,000, divide that by 75%, that will give you 4,000. What does that mean? That your principal, interest, taxes, and insurance payment, HOA, all combined cannot exceed more than 4,000. So if your mortgage payment is higher than that or your responsible debt that is paid is higher there are exceptions but just for the sake of this video let's say that we need to be able to show proof that rent is going for three thousand in your area okay let's talk reserves now reserves on the subject property is only required whether you own 10 plus doors we don't care, we just worry about the property that we are refinancing or purchasing, and we need a minimum of three months. 
Again, if your mortgage payment is $3,000, we need to show that we have three months of that, making that $9,000 in addition to the 20% down and then also any closing costs associated, which would range anywhere from 1% to 2% of your loan amount, okay? Now, moving over to prepayment penalties. While this is state-specific, it can vary, but as long as you are aware, on average, if there is a prepayment penalty assessed, most of the times I've seen it where it's a three-year and it's on a step-down option where, for example, if you pay off the loan balance within the first year, you're going to be charged 3%. If you're paying it off in the second year, it's going to be a 2%. And then on a third year, you'll be charged 1%. So it's a step down. After three years, you will not be charged any prepayment penalty. Note that you do have the option to remove the prepayment penalty. There will be a fee associated or the loan to value may be adjusted or even the interest rate. I believe that covers all of the parameters that I wanted to share with you when it comes to this. Again, the pros for this type of product is a lot more than the cons. The only con that I can reference is the interest rates for these type of products will typically be 1% to 2% higher than your market rate. And what I tell my clients and investors is you didn't qualify going conventional. And so this is your alternative option. It's a solution. And investors don't really care that the interest rate is X, Y, Z so long as performing, which is why we also, as a bank, allow you to take out loans for this size. Now, the loan sizes go up to $3 million, okay? And then the reserves, I want to piggyback on that. In the event that your loan size is higher than $1.5 million, I've seen it where you need a minimum of six months on reserves, okay? So just keep that in mind. Closing time for these type of products I've seen approved as early as nine days. We just typically ask you for 30 days, but on average, we've seen these close two weeks to three weeks. What are the other things I want you to be aware of? So how do I get started? First thing is you would apply just as usual. I can collect your information over the phone or you can submit your information through our secured online portal, which all that information is below in the description. And while the application does prompt you for traditional questions like employment history, you can leave that field, those fields blank. Second, we would review your assets. So all of your mutual funds, 401k, checking, savings, banking account. This is where we need to be able to source your down payment, the reserves, and the closing costs. If you're going to be receiving gift funds, we will also need to be aware of who the donor is and help you uh, with how the wiring of the funds will take place for the day of closing. The income documents that you would need to provide would be as followed. Driver's license, last two months bank statements. If you are refinancing the hard money loan, let's say into a DSCR product, we would need the latest mortgage statement, homeowner's insurance, dec declaration page, and any HOA statements as well. Now, to touch on the market rent and how we can actually prove the debt service that is being covered by your rent is that we would order the appraisal after we've collected and reviewed all your assets and income, or excuse me, your uh, documentation, whether it is an LLC, the entity, paperwork. We would also request for what you call a 1007 schedule with the appraiser and they would send us the local comps within the area proving what the current market rent is. So let's touch on that. Let's say you're buying a property that has a tenant already in place. If we can prove that you have or will be receiving six months consecutive rent from the time that you acquire the property, we can use that active lease. Now, if you're buying a property and they don't have a, a tenant in place, that's where that rent schedule comes into play. <clears throat> if you're buying as an Airbnb, 
short-term rental, we would use those comps. And, <clears throat> and then lastly is if you are looking to do a refinance cash out and have tenants in place, but your market rent schedule is lower than what you currently are charging your tenants, we can go off of the most recent lease agreement and proof of the last two months deposits in the event that that supersedes what the market rent schedule is, okay? But yeah, that ultimately should sh cover, I think, everything that you would want to know when it comes to taking out a DSCR. Some of the questions that I get would be, Candy, can I be part owner of an LLC and still purchase property using the DSCR? And the answer is yes. We allow split ownership as long as you're a minimum of 25% owner and can have up to four separate guarantors on each loan. Another thing I wanna caution you about is the state that you're acquiring properties in. Each state does have limitations, so be sure to reach out to me before looking to submit any offers and working on that pre-approval. If you're looking for a smooth and fast closing, I do want to advise that when submitting docs in, make it easy for us. You know, if you're taking pictures on your phone, make sure that there's enough lighting, nothing is cut off. If you're sending in the bank statements that are pictures and not a PDF, if the bank is issuing you eight pages, one of two, one of three, or excuse me, one of eight, two of eight, send us everything front and back because that's only gonna delay you even though the bank statement may show that is blank, we need to still be able to show the full packet. And then anything else that you can think of, be sure to reach out to me via text, email, and phone calls is how I uh, answer all of my questions. So I hope that this was helpful for you. I'm so excited to continue helping you build your property portfolio. If you stayed this long and you haven't already, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Thank you.